Hello and welcome to another stream by me. My name is Michael and today we're going to do sort of separate things I want to discuss a little bit first on how we should look at uh, the current uh, stuff. Let me just uh, change over to uh, so that you can see me. That's pretty cool, I think. I figured out a new way to uh, to use my phone as a webcam. Now it's not perfect exactly because, uh, well, to be honest. And I've got a new transition. Now, hi hi. Uh, the problem is that my phone is uh, well. I have a set up a um, what do you call it. Uh, um, a stander, a camera stand. I have that for my DSLR. And uh, that means that uh, I can use that camera DSLR as, um, well, to, to keep my phone on. And uh, I have a little uh, little thingy that you can snap it onto. It's really, it's really smart. It works perfectly. But the issue is that, uh, yeah, to be honest, uh, the issue is that, uh, let me see, if, did I add some music here? No. Let me just quickly see if I can do that. Um, no, let's leave it as it is. Um, let me see. No, two seconds. Uh, I'll be right back. Uh, there we go. Now we should have music also in the background with the docking enabled. Um, yes. So the thing is that <laughs> the way my camera is set up right now on my stander, which is, as you can probably imagine, it's pretty tall. I am, you don't have anything to compare it with, but it's sort of, um, my webcam is sort of in this height and the phone is in this height. I'm sorry. I really, it's hard to sort of give a good impression on how but it's tall I don't have sort of a, a little um, gorilla stand or anything like that that could keep it in sort of a in eye height or anything like that so for now you're going to look at me from above uh, from up there and that also means that if I want to talk with you in a good way I need to sort of look like this and it's not really that um, it's not that pleasant actually um, so let me just see, there are some things that I wanted to, uh, to show you. And also, my green screen in the background, I've just used the normal setting for, from, uh, and as you can see, there's some stuff going on, because there's some green spill on, uh, it's backlit, because I have windows in the back, it's not perfect, but it works. It works okay, right? It's okay. So, um, let me just, uh, get an image for you. Um, uh, let's see, uh, it's... Because uh, I want to discuss a little bit the new patch for Star Citizen. I, I find the new patch to be quite good, actually. They have uh, dealt with a lot of the problems that we have seen recently. And um, I'm, I'm not going to talk very much about this, honestly. Because I want to game, right? That's why I'm here. Uh, so let's see. Uh, so one of the things that uh, people have uh, complained a lot about uh, this roadmap update, up the blah, blah, this roadmap update here, um, is that well, the problem is that that damn things missing, right? They have pulled out a lot of stuff and uh yeah L let me just uh, uh save the image here and then we can we can discuss a little bit but but my general um my general impression of the new patch 3.8.1 is that it uh let's see road map update 2020 let's just call it that in lack of a better name 
And let me just uh, put it up here in, uh, in the background instead. But the thing is that I can see it here on my screen and now you can also see it on uh, your... You can see it on your uh, screen as well, so we can talk about it. And I would really love for you to engage in the chat. Uh, tell me what you think of this roadmap. Uh, obviously, those of you who do not play Star Citizen, but are interested in it and just want to see some, some good gaming games with it. Obviously, you will not benefit from what I'm about to show you here because, um, well, obviously, it's 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 uh, <laughs> it, it doesn't really give you anything, right? It's just like, what do you think about the new roadmap update? Well, I, I don't play the game, so I don't really care. Um, and I can get that. So, so, uh, but I've heard a lot of chat uh, going on recently on um, on the forum for 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 Star Citizen that people are pretty upset with 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 what they have done for now and and the the major thing that people are upset with is all the things that they have left out of the uh, of of the uh, of the, the new update let's go down to 3.8 here and and this is what we have now so we have a microtech collection mission giver and you can see here already here they have pulled out uh, fps combat behavior and all that we know that Let's go to 3.9, because that's the thing right now. So one of the issues that people have, and then you can argue whether that is reasonable or not, is that, for example, they have pulled out uh, the, the, this uh, Horizon landing zone. We get new Babbage landing zones, we get rest stop stations, the zone occupied. They pull out Cargo Space Station and Cargo Depot Space Station. Player Locomotion Stairs Improvement will be pulled out. And, and pulled out means that they will they will uh, save it for later. So it's not something that they just say, Oh well, it's too hard. We are not going to do it. No, they are going to have it still here. But... Oh, I'm moving this... <laughs> All right, uh, yeah. They're going to have it still here. It's not that they're just going to pull it out entirely, but it will not, um, it will not, um, It, it will not be in this upcoming 3.9 patch. And let me just give some more uh, impression on on what they're going to. Let me just remove this. And so, player swim. If any of you have played uh, Star Citizen, you'll know that as soon as you jump into water, you will almost instantly die. It's just well, then you're gone. You're gonna goodbye. Um, so uh, that's one of the things that they have pulled out. They have also pulled out the REC Constellation Taurus, which is a ship. We have weapon and item customization has been removed. They, we have server to client actor network rework also been removed, which has uh, been moved to 4.0. And then you can see here for the, the second quarter 2020, we get uh, Crusader, which has been moved from 3.9. We get the Horizon Landing Zone, also been removed. So as you can see, many of the things that we have, that they have pulled out of 3.9, will be either put in at the 4.0, or will be moved to a later iteration. It's very unlikely that they will remove 
everything just um, just instantly, uh, just just completely. Let me just uh, get um, 3.9. Let me see if I can resize it to sort of a suitable way for you to look at. And uh, let me see. There, you can see 3.0, and you can also see just make a little bit smaller, 3.9. You can see it all now, right? You can see all there is to 3.9. It is here. There you go. This is 3.9, and 4.0 is up here. Let me just resize it a little bit more. I hope you can you can read it. So the big question is, as a player of Star Citizen, how do I feel about this? Now, I'm a relatively new player of Star Citizen. I just recently got into the game. I haven't been there much, actually. Well, I would like to reiterate once again, if you have comments regarding uh, this patch here if you have comments regarding uh, let me see if i can move this out so you can look at it while i get back in the, there maybe i should just move myself over here there we go perfect um i would like to reiterate that if you have any comments about this if you have any me uh, meanings if you have any um opinions about this about this recent change that they have pulled out a lot of things that they wanted to put in to uh, 3.9 that has now been moved either to 4.0 or a later iteration if you have any comments about that if you have any opinions about that then please let me know in the comments you can also join my discord server it is in my uh, stream uh, my twitch uh, stream um, window at the bottom um, you can see it there and if you want to sort of have a have a live discussion with me sort of an ear to ear whatever you want to call it um, we can do that as well I'm perfectly in for that but uh, as of now I, I, I've set this up so I just want to hear your comments on the chat and then I will comment on it as um, as, as I go along but Honestly, I must say, well, I can understand why there are many people uh, sort of that has been invested in this um, in this game for quite some time that are annoyed, if you will, that um, that that the uh, CIG, that the uh, Clown Imperium, has uh, chosen to pull out. Um, I pull out these things from from the roadmap update because I can imagine that people were actually looking forward to uh, having uh, the roadmap update to having these things in the game and so I, I get that I get why people are annoyed to, to, I, a lack of a better word annoyed about it and and uh, consider I've heard some people considering um, simply skipping 3.8 and then wait for the later iteration uh, 3.9 or perhaps even 4.0 and then I can to some extent I can understand that I, I, uh, to, to some in, in some instance I get it um, yeah I do personally and I guess that's the opinion that <laughs> matters most to me is it's not really something that annoys me yes there are some things that I would love to have seen I I'm I'm really passionate about this game, even though I've only been in it for a very short time. And so I want more content, I want more planets, I want more ships, I want it all at once. So hire a million people to work on this game and let's go. But I, I get why they remove things. And to be honest, 
I would rather prefer that they strip a lot of things from the 3.9 roadmap. Um, from 3.8 and 3.9. And then the things that they have in that roadmap, up, road, blah, 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 roadmap update, they stick to it. And they say, we are going to uh, set all our powers into, uh, into getting these things done. I, I would much rather prefer that than they kept some of the all of the stuff inside the 3.9 update uh, roadmap up the roadmap update <laughs> and and then suddenly at, at the end said well we need to remove it because we couldn't finish it so rather be upfront right now and say we, we, we remove this and then what's left we're going to deal with that also and I think that's some of the things that people might not get and I don't, I don't see it as an excuse in, its end, in, in essence, because if you're committed to making a game, then you're going to need to make that game. Then you can just, just can't say, well, we're going to uh, make this game, and but then we're going to make another game also, and so, so, but, but I do get that as being a crowdfunded game. CIG is a crowdfunded, Star Citizen is crowdfunded, and for the most part, or for all the part actually, as far as I know, um, Squadron 42 is also crowdfunded. But as of now, the, uh, the, the Squadron 42 game will be the money maker for CIG. And, and it's probably a little misnomer to use that. It's not correct, the accurate word to use. It's the money maker, but but this is the uh, this is the, the the chance that CIG has right now to to show we can do this. We can make a game a successful su bleh, successful AAA game that people would want to buy and play and all that. And also to show uh, possible stockholders. I'm, I'm, I don't know how CIG is going to finance their work in, in, in the future. I just know that I get why they have set all their forces into getting Squadron 42 done. Also because there's a sort of a, a transfer, there's, there's a link, let me just link <laughs> between squadron 42 and uh, the persistent universe or, or uh, as we call it star citizen but th that's the persistent universe and that um that link is that what we what what they put into squadron 42 will eventually find its way to star citizen so you could say that squadron 42 is meant to be sort of a sub division of star citizen like if you have uh an army in the world or something like that it's it's a, a special mission that is focused on on i think it's first player and perhaps multiplayer but nevertheless it's, it's, it's that kind of game it's a story driven you 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 get missions you do the stuff and all that whereas the persistent universe is sort of more sandboxy it should be an mmo and all that so in my opinion like I said, it's not really something that annoys me terrible. And and the reason is that I enjoy the game. I truly enjoy this game. I enjoy playing it. I think it's beautiful. I think it's it's funny. Yeah, there's still some bugs that needs to be fixed. Of course there are. So one of the other things that I wanted to sort of pick up here and, and, and whoever is watching and, and want to sort of engage in the in, in this discussion please do if you just want to listen to me and 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 then you can just well you can either think uh what an idiot <laughs> or you could say well i agree but i'm not a professional programmer at all i'm an astronomer not a physicist but one of the trademarks if you will of astronomers is that we need to have some grasp of programming because much of the work that that astronomers do uh regarding um um handling data reducing data and all that and and analyzing the data 
needs you to have some sort of programming experience and knowledge and and more importantly perhaps you often have to write programs that can model your the data that you have in order to have something to compare with so but i'm not a professional programmer i have never ever programmed a game at all so i don't know anything about that particularly what i've tried to do is to take what is called a functional program a c program which well it's it's based on functions that's why it's called that and then try to uh, rewrite that for uh, C++, which is object-oriented. And I can tell from that point of view that uh, that perfectly working <laughs> functional program got completely screwed up on that. And there were bugs upon bugs upon bugs upon bugs, and when you corrected one bug, another popped up. Also, I have tried, but I didn't finish it, to implement into a program something called OpenMP. So in short, OpenMP is a platform that enables you to connect another, a, a lot of servers to, to work on the same model. So for instance, some of these big um, particle models for, for cosmology and all that, they often use OpenMP or a variety of that in order to, to generate these big models and then they connect all these huge servers with big hard drives and lots of memory. To, to engage in that because you need all that processing power in order to, to model this little universe that you're that you're modeling so i try to write uh, rewrite a relatively little program in order to use openmp and 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 the thing is that when you want to use openmp in a program that is not designed for it you need to change basically in the entire part of the code you need to, to rewrite a lot of stuff in it in order to enable it to do that. So where am I going with this? The thing is that in the patch 3.8, CIG implemented the new um, SOX service or technology, if you will, server side object container streaming. So what this means, let me just try to, if, if you understand it, then just plug your ears and, and don't listen. Uh, maybe I say something that's stupid and then you definitely shouldn't listen. Or maybe you should correct me. I'm not sure about that. Um, but what we had in 3.7, as far as I know it, was um, container streaming, object container streaming on the client side. What that means is that when you start up your... Let me just take what Star Citizen did at the very beginning. I'm not sure. I came in at the game at 3.7.2. So I don't know what has happened before that. Other than people have complained a lot about it also there. But, but I do know that at some point, Star Citizen had neither SOX server-side or object container streaming at all. That meant that this universe that they have created, or this little planetary system actually, um, was loaded totally into the server. So the memory was completely, the memory completely filled, the, um, the memory of the servers were completely filled because in the entire part of that little solar system had to be loaded in all the time. It was just constantly there in the memory. And also on the client side, when you loaded the game, all of that solar system, all of the positions, all of the data that was, was also loaded into the uh, client side, the, the, the player's computer, which eventually, if you, I, I don't think you need to, to think very hard, very hard and very long about that, that would put quite a strain on the computers. You would need to have a really beefy system. You still need to have a beefy system in order to play Star Citizen relatively uh, okay. Uh, but at that point, imagine you need to fill up your entire memory bank on your computer with all of that solar system. Um, I'm not sure how exactly they did it, but that's what it meant. So the first iteration of container streaming was that 
on your side, on the client's side. It was only the part where you were at that solar system and of course a given radius, your the visual radius that you have, that would be loaded into your memory. So you can sort of imagine as you travel along in the solar system, the, 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 the system is constantly loading in things that is in front of you and removing things that were in behind of you instead of just having the entire thing in even the remote part of the solar system where you probably never came let's say you play in star citizen where you only move around at let's say a crusader and Hurston, perhaps that's the you, you you do a travel route between Hurston and Crusader, back and forth, back and forth. So, Arc Corp or Microtech or any other location, you don't deal with that. You, you're not there. But without the, the 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 object container streaming on your client side, that part will still be loaded into your computer, just being there idle and filling up the memory. So without with container streaming that would be not be loaded into your system that would be excluded until you decided to go and visit it all right so far so good so what they have done now in 3.8 is basically the same on the server side so we have two systems that need to to talk with each other and and the thing is that what the servers now do is that when you travel to Crusader, for example. The server will only load Crusader and that area that you can see for you. So imagine on the server side before you had this entire map with players in it. And then you could draw circles around the players to sort of show what the entire map was. Um, and what the clients would see of that map. With server-side object container, you simply blank out all the parts where you don't have circles anymore. So the part where uh, of the of Stanton, where there aren't any players, that is not loaded into the server. Only when a player visits that system, that part of the system, will it be loaded into the server. Coffee break. <laughs> Oh yes, check my nerdy cup. And uh, <laughs> there you can see the problem. <laughs> uh, yes, I do use a chroma key and um, you can hopefully, it's a transparent cup. It's pretty cool, right? You can see them. <laughs> yeah, all right, funny. So, and, and you can see, this is what I know. This is the part that I know and to some extent can understand. I have not looked obviously because i'm not a developer at cig and probably never will i don't believe i have the skills for it even though i have some experience with 3ds max and all that i'm not on that level at all but nevertheless that's that's uh i digress but i have to take the developer's word for what they tell us how they have done it and from what they say and this is where it came in where I said before about this with with my programming experience and removing this and that and all that. The socks meant that the developers had to change just about any part of the game as it were on the server. So every code part of the game they had to tinkle with at some point. And it's obvious, right? If I, as a happy am amateur, rewrite a little program, couple of hundred lines of code, nothing more, to do simple operations, even just let's take whether it's going to OpenMP or it's going to um, or it's going to uh, um, yeah, sorry, lost track to, uh, to 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 make a functional program converted into an object oriented program there will be bugs and when you fix that box you'll have more other box and when you have fixed those box there'll be more box and box and box and box and box and box 
And so I understand why players coming from 3.7, which admittedly was a relatively stable uh, iteration of the game, really stable. I played it a couple of hours in a row and I didn't have one crash, one server crash at all. My computer crashed, but that's my part, right? But, but the server didn't crash once. Then, during the Christmas, the, the, the uh, holidays for, for Christmas, they implemented 3.8. And when we all came happily back, perhaps even with new hardware, we got in Christmas presents. I didn't get any, but I got my new computer early on. I digress again. Sorry. Then people log into the game and they get 30k errors. 30k errors, 30k errors, 30k errors, and 30k errors, and more 30k errors, all the time. And I can understand why some people would look at that game and say, mm, You, CIG, what the heck did you do with this game? And I can also understand why, I just need to move a cord from my mouse. I can also understand why some people would look at this game and, and, we're gamers, right? Admittedly, some of us, maybe most of us, are to some extent nerds at some level, but I don't think that most of the Star Citizen gaming um, community has extended programming experience, or anything like that. They're just happy nerds that are gaming, and that's the way it should be. Completely. Yes. And so I can understand why some people might have looked at this game and l just looked at it and say, CIG, honestly, we had a really good, stable iteration of the game. And then you went and f it up for what? Nice weather on Microtech? No. But, but I can understand why people would think that. That's what they saw. That was what they got. Yeah, perhaps a couple of ships and all that. But that was what was in the package seen from that vantage point. We got cool weather on the planets. But we couldn't see any of it. Because every time we landed on a planet, we'll get a 30k error. And I can get the, those people that made travel routes and filled up, I don't know, uh, a freelancer max or a, um, for those of you who are not into star citizen probably you all are that are watching right now if any are watching i hope that <laughs> um, i get why people would be completely furious f doing box missions to get i don't know hundred thousand uec something like that and then use all of that hard-earned money to fill up a Caterpillar or Freelancer Max or anything like that. Yeah, uh, sorry. <clears throat> the Freelancer Max is a big transport ship. So it's basically a, a space truck of some sort. And the Caterpillar is an even bigger space truck. You can, you can fill it up with a lot of commodities and then you can sell. So the way selling works in Star Citizen as of now is that you work as sort of an independent um, retail seller or something like that. You go to a some, some certain place and then you buy some medical supplies or uh, metals, aluminium, all that, and, and, and gas. And, and then you, you you use your money to buy that. So that's yours. You could, you could, if you could build anything with it, you could do that. But instead, you just fly to another place that will hopefully pay you more money to to uh to sell it and then you can earn money on that way and let's say a given player opens um uh, land on um i don't know some outpost on yila something like that one of the moons and then fill up his lovely uh, freelancer max with all the medical supplies he can get Depending on how much the outpost is willing to sell, how much they have, and depending on how much money this uh, person have, he can, he can, he or she can easily get away with uh, spending 
somewhere between 50 to 70, maybe 80% of the entire, um, of the entire um, wallet. <laughs> so what do you call it? Fake money, but nevertheless. And, and so, and, and then they fly away and, and perhaps a really bitter situation, right? They just land and get out of that ship and they got to the uh, trading terminal and they were just to press the mouse button and then a 30k error. And then you maybe lose all your commodities and you lose all your money and I get that. I get why people would go f completely bollocks mad on that account. I do, I get it. But, and that is my point. It's annoying. It's annoying as hell and it means that we all have to do box missions for the rest of, no, 3.8 perhaps, maybe even 3.9. The thing is, if you look at it from that point of view, that they have changed everything in the code on the service. And also, what does it mean for us as players that we have socks? Because from now, for now, it just seemed that what we got from it was, uh, well, a broken game. We got uh, trains that <laughs> wouldn't work on, uh, on Law Will. We uh, got a uh, majority of a lot of 30k errors. We would get, uh, yeah, what more we get? A lot of bugs that were completely annoying. Strange, uh, strange AIs, uh, the NPCs standing on chairs and all strange, all strange bugs that we just think, why don't you fix that? Because that seems relatively easy to do. And When you look it at that point of view, like I said, that they've changed the entire code. And also that what socks eventually means is one, they can put more players into the servers. That's what they have tested recently in one of the PTUs, Persistent Test Universe. Uh, for those of you who are not into the lingo. and. It also means, you could say that the reason why we don't have, well, you could say there's a, there's a developer side of this, of course, time constraints. But one of the major reasons that we don't have another solar system, another star system in Star Citizen, that we don't have more moons, more planets, all that, is because the servers were filled up. Like I said, they loaded everything of the universe everything into the memory and that just the service couldn't handle anymore if you put more planets and things it would crash constantly which sucks it means that they could free up that valuable memory that valuable resources in the service to have more room for more things and and it if you think of it, it makes perfect sense. If you make uh, 10 star systems and put it into a server, and the server has to load all of those star systems all the time, then the memory will pretty quickly get filled. But if the servers only load those star systems parts where players are, you can fill it up. You can, you can put hundreds of systems in there and it doesn't matter because the servers only need to handle where there are players. And if you think of it, it's brilliant. It's so freaking brilliant. And it means that now they have an open door to go forward with putting in the new systems, the new, new planets, new moons, all that. We got Microtech because of Sucks. Well, they wanted to put Microtech in there, yes, of course. But we got the planet, the, I think at least. I don't know it, I'm not a developer there, but that's what I think because of Sox. Sox gave them the opportunity and the possibility to put Microtech into, and Microtech, the moon of, moons of Microtech, into the game. I think there are also meant to be some parts of the atmosphere of Crusader, where there should be some landing posters and all that. Uh, floating around up in um, in midair, 
in, in that gas giant. I would very much like to hear uh, your opinion about the patch while we uh, and also about the roadmap update if you're interested if you want to uh, to discuss it if you just want to look at me um, do some strange stuff and all that last time i played if you watch some go and watch the, the previous stream my uh, loner free max uh, freelancer man no just freelancer uh was missing an engine and i think it was a graphical glitch but but nevertheless that's what it did let's get going I don't have anything more to say about 3.8.1 or the roadmap update. As I said, I get all the bugs that we have, annoying as they may be, and I also get why they have uh, scrapped some of the parts that were in the uh, in the roadmap update. Annoying as it may be, I get it. I do get it. All right, let's go into the game. It's always interesting to uh, start up. Uh, last time I played also, I started a very good, it was a very good start. I couldn't get out of the door, I was in the room. So it was a very short game until I locked out and locked in again, of course. But uh, And probably uh, suiciding myself wouldn't help because then you would still um, you would still uh, probably end up in the same room, so... Uh, Yes, let me just say again once more. I am experimenting with different setups here in, in respect to my stream. I must admit, and please let me know in the chat if you will. Please do, those of you who are watching. Personally, I really don't care for that webcam thingy back in the corner that you can see me there, but somebody suggested to me that it would be um, good for my stream and good for my audience to see me reacting whenever I do something completely stupid. So I honestly really don't care for webcam games thing. I think it's distracting to see them cheering and rah, 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 uh, in, in the in, in, in the in the bottom part of or uh, top part or wherever they have put themselves um but well if you like it then i'll do it and like i said i'm trying to experiment with uh with the uh, different uh setups here my setup if you take apart my uh i'm a blue yeti man sorry about it i just don't have the money or the well, not just the money, actually. To get sort of a, a real XLR mic and, and, a, and a capture device and all that. I got the Blue Yeti because I thought that it would suit my needs, to say it. That's, that's the way it is. But my uh, green screen in the background here, it is simply, honestly, it is simply just a green sheet from a bed that I got from my mom. All right, so now we are in the uh, Freelance Max. Yeah, so my setup here is relatively, well, to a quite big extent, do it yourself. I have a camera stand. You can see it, it's over here, uh, which I have my phone on, and I found a way to use my phone as a uh, webcam because I have a very old web webcam standing up here on the screen. Uh, it's, uh, I'm not sure how old it is, but it's one of those, uh, 640 by 480, uh, pixels. So as you can imagine, it's pretty old. And when I try to do green screen with it, it just, I become transparent and I don't want to be transparent. <laughs> All right. So let's, uh, and, and today's stream, well, oh my, oh, how nice this is back. Again, if you look at uh, my last stream, I uh, lost it to some strange and unimaginable circumstances. Oh yes, I locked up above a planet, so I shouldn't go and take a stroll. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's get uh, the ship started up. So as you can see, we still, I still have the loner Freelancer Max. It's nice. I like it. I'm just going to... I do this every time. 
And I'm not sure it is, uh, sorry, I'm not sure it is necessary, but I do it anyway. So I load in my, and this is also something you can ask me about if you want to know something about how I set up my things and all that we can talk about. I have set up, well, first I started with a Logitech profile because I have a, just look at this. <laughs> I have an old Logitech dual action. Look at that. It looks like an old um, PlayStation 2 controller or something like that. It's really old. I initially bought it in order to uh, control my uh, telescope. Um, so I'm also an amateur astronomer and I use the, uh, the, the I use that controller to control my telescope because when I was outside at the telescope, instead of having to run into my computer, it's computer controlled. So run into my laptop inside the garage, move it up around, around a little bit, go out and look through the search telescope to see if I was near the star, go back and move it again, and then possibly go in the wrong direction. You can imagine that back and forth a lot of times. Instead, I put out this controller out, outside with the telescope, and then I could just play my way around in order to find the stars and have hotkeys for all kind of different cool stuff aligning stars and all that the problem was that when i was finished with aligning stars i would very much like to get my uh telescope my my um controller back inside with me but if i pull the plug on the telescope it was connected to an usb hub out at the mount and then put it into the uh the computer into the laptop it suddenly couldn't uh, find the, the, the controller or the key, so nothing worked. So, and then I got a camera that I could use to align the, the stars with, and then so the, the idea just vanished, actually. So, yeah. So that is why I now use uh, this uh, controller here for gaming, and it works pretty okay. So we have, uh, I've set up, I started with this Logitech profile here. And then I set up a fight profile and a freight profile. And the only difference is that on the freight profile, as you can see here in a minute, uh, I have uh, hotkeys for uh, landing gear and that stuff, the uh, um, quantum drive. On the fight profile, I have hotkeys to find a new target, to uh, change between flares and pull out flares and all that. So, uh, yeah. But I do this every time because... I'm not entirely sure that uh, the, uh, the the controls will be loaded in correctly. So uh, let's figure out what we can uh, can do. As you can see, I'm still very poor. I had a an 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 issue. I had a problem, and the thing is that it was not a um, it was not a CIG induced problem. It was a, an error 40, as we say here in Denmark. The error is sitting about 40 centimeters from the screen. So it was my stupid mistake. So what I did was that... Um, let me just get these... Uh, no, I'll tell you about how stupid I was. Could often Denmark taken to outcome? Yeah, that's okay. We can do that. I usually tend to go for three at a time. Cruel for... Uh, bountiful harvest. I try to avoid the ones that need to go to sort of these uh, um, rest and relaxation posts. Shooting, mining, uh, research on Yela. Yes, let's take this as well. So, as f if I'm not mistaken, we should be pretty close to Yela right now. So let's try to track that. And see. Oh, wrong button. So let's see. All right. So what I did what was that I wanted to try some um, some travel routes. I thought that would be a good idea to try out some travel routes. And I worked out a good travel route. Hopefully, I can find it again because I have it on a web page somewhere. But yeah, I got a good travel route tested it out to see how much I made and then what I did was I landed 
on one of these uh, outposts where they fortunately they had these landing posts or landing pads and if you ask them can I please land there they will say no because your darn ship is too big even if you come in I, I started with the Aurora your biggest your ship is too big and it's not it's, really, it's even the freelancer can land but nevertheless if you ask them ship is too big ship is too big so as a good um, anarchist I just land there anyway and the advantage of doing that is that you can uh, refuel rearm and repair and all that the disadvantage is that if you land there if you fill up your ship and I had about 40k UEC at that point 40,000 47,000 I think it was I spent just about 40,000 UEC on medical supplies perfect it would give me good money and what did I do stupid as I was <laughs> I let my ship be landed on the landing pad locked out in the ship the correct way nothing there I did all the right thing except for one thing I didn't move my ship so for some reason I really can't get it's a bug by the way but what CIG has um, decided <laughs> is that when you land on one of these pads and uh, you uh, log out even if you log out the correct way oh stop 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 no I told you I would screw up <laughs> but um, yeah Let me just land this. You know, talking and flying at the same time. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. All right. So now we are doing the 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 suggested way. We're hovering. So we go into the menu, and then we can see here. We can well, we can. Refuel, let's do that. Refuel the hydrogen. Not much, but we can do it. We can repair. Like that. And even if we ask the ship, well, it won't do it now. But usually, if you ask the ship to other land, it will also do that. Let me see now. No. But it usually does it on these platforms here. Successful. Good. Off. So let's go out and uh, pick up the box. So for some reason I can't get. When you log out. Standing on one of these pads. It's a box. So, but. but what happened was that I locked out in the ship while the ship was standing on a pad like this. See, my engine is gone again. <laughs> hey, who, who stole my engine? I want it back. Oh, oh well. Let's get the, the box, at least. At least I can get my box. Um, if I can find my way there... It's a lot of snow in the air. Anyway, I landed on that pad. I bought a lot of medical supplies. And because I have children and they need to be fed some from time to time. Well, it was dinner time at that point. So, uh, oh, look at that. This is so cool. This is why I... All the box aside and all that, this is why I love 
this? Can you look at this? It's oh, it's so freaking cool. Nevertheless, I did all that. I did in in essence, I did all the right things except one thing. I forgot that one of the recent bugs is that if you land on a pad like that, where's the ship? Um, there. And for some reason I can't see it, but it's there. If you land on a pad like that, you fill it up with stuff. And then you log out in the ship or anywhere else, actually just log out. What happened to me was that I ended up in the last place. I, uh, I landed one of the, uh, rest and recreation places, I believe. It's not a that's not a huge problem in itself because well this is the loner ship right uh from cig so i also have uh the titan adventure so i just spawned my titan adventure and jumped into the uh oh come on i just spawned the titan adventure and jumped into it and um Happily flew back to the... Hmm... Try something. It is that. Let me see if I can get it from him. Something I can help you with. Yeah, you can... Uh, I want to make a pickup. If I can get to it. I think you're confused. No, I'm not confused. Your damn box doesn't work. Arr! Or I'll. Sorry. Let's try again. Um, let's try again. Please. Give me my box. Um, yes. So I locked out. I woke up somewhere. I can't remember. Oh. Just, uh, let me see. Uh, uh, drop off. Let me try that. Well, to make a long story short, I took my Titan Avenger, I flew all the way, all the way back to Yil, I actually think it was. Yay, I got my box, thank you. Um, landed on, I think it was Hicks Research Outpost, landed there. And, and when I was in the station and, and tried to sort of ask the station, where is my ship? The position was unknown, but it could tell me, or location was unknown, but it could tell me that it was at the Higgs Research Station. So, in essence, the place I was trying to look at. Yes. The only problem was that when I got there, there were no freelancer. It was there. But it wasn't. That's a conundrum, right? No. Because what has happened in uh, besides missing engine parts? <laughs> uh, what has happened in, in the recent 3.8.1 patch is that... Let me just put the box down here. Like that. Thank you. Is that when you land on a pad like this and then you log out... The game thinks, oh, you have landed on a ship pad. And let us just, we, we should, of course, store your ship. So my ship was actually where I just expected it would be. It was at Yila, at Hicks Research Outpost. So what did... Clever Michael do? Or Mike? I ran all the way over. Let me just show you. Let me just... No, I'm, I'm going to show you from the ship. I knew that on many of these outposts, there was a... What do you call it? A place where you can spawn small 
vessels, like the bike I have in the background, the yellow jacket thingy. Launch sequence complete. Let's see. Uh, that one. That over there. So I went into that, and I thought, well, why don't I just try to spawn my ship from there? Because if they can store my ship, they should be able to spawn my ship. Makes perfect sense, right? No. It was, unfortunately, only a one-way trip. So, my ship was for, with that valuable medical supplies. Was forever lost. <laughs> and, and one of those freaking pads... Uh, it it was just it was right in front of me. I could almost smell the ship, but I couldn't get to it. So uh, I was left with. Fortunately, I didn't spend all the money. I left a little bit, but I could I could easily easily have spent just about the majority of the uh, UEC that I, that I had. And then, quite frankly, may not be able to. Um, to buy anything, to, to even uh, tr travel anywhere. So uh, for, so I was uh, stuck with box missions once again. So uh, yeah. So uh, the lesson to be learned from, uh, from my story. Don't ever land your ship on a pad, an outpost past, outpost past, an outpost pad. Say that quickly, ten times in a row. I'll post back, I'll post back. <laughs> uh, don't ever do that and then log out. Because even though if you log out into your, in your ship, in a bed, just like the way you're supposed to do, the game will apparently still think that you are not where you're supposed to be. And then it will put you in one position and it will, it will store your ship and it will be forever lost. Until you you can claim it, of course, but then the content will be lost. All right, so let's see where we need to pick up the next. So one of the reasons also that I um. Oh no, not again! Why? What? What's? Um. <laughs> what the, what the freak is going on? All right, set route. Oh, uh, never mind. Was, let, let's just see what happens when we get there. Yeah, that's one of the uh, more annoying box in uh, in the game. Let me just try to show you at some point, but nevertheless, let me just tell you, and then I can uh, show you perhaps at a later point. Okay. Um. So one of the more annoying boxes that and it and apparently I've only found this at at around uh, Crusader the Crusader system. So uh, when you uh, want to go to one of the moons. Or stations or anything of that sort that is around Crusader that you can't get to so essentially being behind um, Crusader usually you would get these uh, OM points that have been uh, positioned um, all around the system. At first, I thought that they were sort of randomly generated. So, if you, um, depending on where you wanted to go, then the game would uh, sort of generate an OM point for you to use to sort of. Well, what it does is that if you are. Uh, the quantum drive is only working as far as i know in in line of sight 
So essentially that means that if where you want to go um, is not in your line of sight, then it will try to give you a route so that it can get into line of sight. And I think that what the developers actually have done is that they have placed all a lot of these OM points as fixed points around in space. At first I thought that they were randomly generated, but I don't think that anymore because, and like I said, I've only seen this uh, at Crusader. If you, and let me, I'm, my son is getting home soon, so I just want to remove an ear pad so that I can open the door for him. Um, one of the moons, sorry, if you try to go to one of the parts of uh, the Crusader system that is not in your line of sight, then it will generate, give you this OM point, and you can use that. The only thing is that, for some reason, that OM point right now is placed in the either in the middle or somewhere around the Stanton Star. So you travel, oh no, 30 million kilometers from one planet to <laughs> to um, to Crusader. In order to get to one of the moons behind Crusader, you then travel. 14 or 16 million kilometers to, <laughs> to Stanton, to the sun, and then you travel the same distance back to that star. That's ridiculous, right? Unfortunately, fortu not unfortunately, fortunately, there is a workaround. You can just choose something that, oh, look at that. They even get the reddening of the sun. The, let me just... Stop, stop, stop. Let me just... I wanna, I wanna, I wanna do this. Look at, look at... Look at that! The, oh, <laughs> yeah, look at that. <laughs> look at it! That is... Oh. This is why I am in love. Deeply in love. I know this sounds creepy or cheesy or anything like that. That is why I am deeply in love with Star Citizen. Look, I have never, ever seen anything as cool in a, in a game like this. I, never. And and I, I will honestly admit that, like I said, I haven't tried any of these big other space games out there, uh, No Man's Sky and um, what was uh, Elite Dangerous. I, I don't have those, I haven't tried them or anything like that. I am really low. Let me just see if I can find somewhere. This is how... Yeah, I know I'm about to land, so of course I'm going to collide with the ground in some sense. Oh, I think I landed on a rock. Let's go a little bit to the side. Yes. Oh, let's go and see. Alright, so the reason why I turned the engines off, I know that it will give me a little bit more time to... to warm up the engines when I need to go, and if... It's not a, it's not an armistice zone this here, so if someone wanted to come... If someone watched my stream and wanted to come and kill me, they would have... Look at this. Look, I can see my shadow from the sun in the dust. In the dust of the planet. And look at that. <laughs> come on. If you can, if you, this is honestly, really, I am completely honest here. This, this is worth all the box in the world this game has to offer. That's my opinion. Just look, look at the reflection on the ship. It's, I, my freaking God, this is so, this is beautiful. And 
One of the things that I think that Star Citizen has that practically no other game I have ever played has. No other game. No other game. Is the immersion. The feeling that I'm actually here. This is this is how this is honestly how I would imagine it would be standing on the surface of Mars and look at and looking look looking at a sunrise. I think it's a sunrise because it's up way be- taller than it was before. This is how I would think and, and with the sandstorm and all that. And and look at and you can see the the uh, the Jupiter like planet the uh, it's a crusader but it's a Jupiter it's a gas giant you can see it in the uh, I'm I'm almost <laughs> I could honestly I know we have a box we need to pick up so we should do that but I could honestly just sit down and look at that just look at it enjoy it and it is a game for freaking sake this is not reality this is not i enjoy watching a sunrise in real life definitely i'm an astronomer so i enjoy looking at stars and no matter how you want to look at it the biggest and nearest star we have in the universe is the sun so obviously i also like to look at the sun but This is it's incredible, it's really, honestly, incredible. If you don't have Star Citizen, get it right now. If you don't have a computer that can run it, get a computer that can run it. Look at this. Now, I want to say, if any of you watching right now don't have Star Citizen and you are contemplating getting Star Citizen, you shall be most welcome to go to my Twitch page which you have obviously seen now, and use my referral code there. You shall know that you will get 5,000 UEC right off the bat by doing that. But I want to be completely upfront with you and say, if you choose to do so, there will eventually, depending on how many of you are going to do it, there will be a little perk in it for me. I will maybe get a, a little ship, or anything like that at some point so I, I it's not like i want to sort of uh uh hide it under the carpet and try to sort of lure you into uh, to doing it if you want to do it then do it if you don't want to if you if you think no i don't want to support that fool with anything i'm going to get the game for myself then do it please do so the more people that support this game The more people I have to play with, the more people we have to play with, and and let's be frank, the more money and and I wouldn't say that CIG is sort of actually lacking money. They have invested a heck of a lot of money into the development of Squadron Forty Two, which means that they are apparently <laughs> my engine. Uh, they are apparently low on money but anyone who has ever done anything and i even i have i haven't done that but anyone who has done any kind of investment know that when you invest you do get low on money that's what is in investing uh so uh but nevertheless the point is that the more people the more money that cig has to work with well, the more people they can hire, and the more people they can hire, the more content we'll get. That's just the way it is. There's nothing to... There's no no reason to, to sort of try to uh, to deny that or, or go beyond it or anything like that. That's just... That's... that's hmm. That is just the way the world works. So, uh, yeah. All right, let's get the final box. But I just want to say... 
that if you are contemplating, also those of you who who watch my my d d watch this video sort of post stream or perhaps on my YouTube channel, if you use my referral code, you will get something from it. You will get these five thousand USC. It's not something that I'm, and it doesn't cost you anything. It's just a bunch of numbers and letters that you put into a box and then you say click and then it, it is there and you get the 5,000. But I just want to be upfront with you and say if you do it, there will at some point be something in it for me as well. And and so if you want to contribute to my streaming, to my channel, to my fleet of vessels, then thank you. If you don't, then thank you for watching. That's just how I see it. I don't want to lure you or push you or anything like that into doing something like this. Not at all. I just want you to, to, uh, well, I'm content just by having followers, having people that watch my stream. It's this reason why I'm here. All right. Coffee break. And, um, Obviously, if you follow my channel, I can see your names and I know who you are and I can thank you and all that jazz. If you uh, if you press the follow button right now, up in the top of the screen should come a little uh, blah, 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 some, something that tells uh, blah, blah, blah has followed. And, and you'll get notifications. Uh... Oh, wow. Look at that. It's... It's like being there. It almost makes me cry. <laughs> no, but really, look at this. It is... Ah! Oh, I know this is going to sound really, really cheesy and silly of put whatever syllable you want on it but to be completely fair and honest this this game here this is the game I've been waiting for I wouldn't go as far as say all my life but definitely all the part of my life where I knew I wanted to play uh, star games, that's uh, space games, right? I've tried different games. So what have I played? I have played uh, just almost any Star Wars game you can imagine, almost to some extent. Uh, at least the older ones, tough, TIE Fighter, uh, Rebel Alliance, all that. Cool games. Can do a lot of stuff in it. Enclosed, of course, because, well, it is old games. Um, I've played the new Star Wars games. I've played Star Trek games, uh, Bridge Commander, and the new, I can't remember what it's called, Star, Star Trek Online, I think it's called. I've played Star Wars, The Old Republic, all, well, in my opinion, relatively good games. But as good as they may be, I've been, the Star Trek Online was almost getting there. Almost, but only almost. They lacked two crucial parts that, look at this, there's sand dunes down there. For freaking, and it, oh, it looks like sand dunes. Those games missed some, some crucial parts. Let me see if I can find the delivery. There it is. Let me see if I can fast travel. I can. They missed, first of all, the openness of the game. Like I said, Star Trek 
online to some extent in my opinion was somewhere there it was still a lock game you could do missions and you you could you could f fly around but it was still sort of invested in the same idea that either you fought someone or you did some other stuff usually fighting um star wars the old republic well that was definitely just a massive multiplayer online multiplayer fighting game you could go to different planets you could follow the storyline but eventually all you did was to go and fight and upgrade and all that just like a um uh, uh not warhammer um warcraft world of warcraft something like that then we had uh star wars bridge command and all that more enclosed definitely story driven very locked so that's the one part that these games were missing in my opinion the other part that these games were missing a lot a lot all of them was the immersion so what star citizen gives me that i don't think any game has ever given me is one the immersion and two the freedom i can do the heck uh, the, ever the heck i want in this game i can fly around to all the planets and just walk around and pee in the corners and well if you could pee in the game but <laughs> nevertheless i suppose you get my point it's an open game you can do what you want there are missions that you can do i'm doing them right now in order to make money so that you can have more freedom in the game so I, I suppose that what Star Citizen gives that has that gives this big immersion is that it to some extent very much resembles real life. This is basically what we do in real life, right? We take missions, we find a job. We perform that job in order to get money and then with that money we can go and buy new hardware for computers. In this case here we buy new hardware for our ships or new ships. We can uh, uh, go on travels. In this case we take our ship and then we travel somewhere. You can't exactly uh, take a vacation in the, uh, in the game per se but because you, you can't rent a room or anything like that but you can sort of take a sort of a road trip around in the in this system and uh and and see different stuff and you can sleep in your ship and then you can go and see more stuff and so i would argue that to some extent it's very much like essentially what we do in real life with minor adjustments because I don't have my own personal space bus, a space truck that I can fly around in and do that. But I would say that um, oh, he's really itching to get out and and fly around, aren't you? Maybe we should uh, go to Microtech and uh, fly a bit around. I'm not sure about that. I don't think I have enough time for my stream to do that. Sorry about that. But um, I will uh, deliver the boxes. That's, that's what I set out to do and this is what we're going to do. So yeah, I, and look at Of course there are some things in this game where we either have graphical glitches or some parts that look a bit strange, but the journey. But yes, like I said, this game gives me something that I 
honestly, quite frankly, honestly, all that jazz, all those words. Don't think I've ever, never ever, oh, not again, never ever seen in a game at all. Thank you. They are a bit uh, finicky with these boxes here, then don't really give them, want to give them up. Cycle, please. Hello. Hello. Thank you. And I forgot to close my bo my door, my box door, my door. Hopefully I don't have a stowaway in there. Maybe someone's sitting up in the, uh, no, I would see it. <laughs> What's, uh... Did I land on something? Because it looks like it's... Didn't I put out the landing? <laughs> I forgot to put down... <laughs> oh, poor ship. I forgot to put out the landing gear. Oh. My poor little ship. I, I was pretty convinced that I put down the landing gear, but obviously I didn't. Or maybe the ship forgot that it had that. I'm not sure about that. Ah. Uh, the world is a bit slanted here. Alright, so, uh. Let's deliver the fir first box. And I take it in that. Um. What do you call it? Um. Direction. The way. That the first box I pick up is also the first box that I um, deliver. And the only reason for that is that I do honestly think that there's some kind of timer on the missions. I mean, even, even though if you have a lot of time to, uh, to deliver them, you can still end up with a box that you can't deliver so just I just do that maybe it's completely there's no reason for it I'm not sure about that but that's the way I do it that's just the way it is just uh... all right so uh, let's uh, take off with this poor ship let me see if, if I got my engine back no I still lack an engine <laughs> All right, let's go to, uh, I think it was Ak Akko. So let me just see. Yeah, we need to turn this way. Punch it. So 42 million kilometers. That is going to take a little while. Thingy. Oh no. Let me see if it's police or it's uh, bandits. Or nobody. Bandits. Cool down. Yeah, so one idea, like I said, is that also at some point in time, um, when I have uh, scraped enough followers or whatever you want to call it, um, I think it's. No, let me just say the idea is that at some point. When I do this uh, podcast thingy, uh, like I just did, talking about, um, there we are. Oh, it's trying. There we go. Um, 
discussing uh, the new updates for Star Citizen or new ships or whatever it is that I sort of bring to the table and you can also bring to the table not not just me but also you then we can my idea was that I would uh, ask you to join me on my discord on the text server that is and then one at a time we would have a conversation a voice conversation about these uh, updates but it is just as well uh, an idea for me to uh yeah okay of course it's obstructed it would just as much be an idea for me just to uh to have you ask questions um with words on the chat give you a send your questions there your comments your opinions all that but sometimes it is just it is just more interesting to have sort of a an uh, a real conversation all right so let's see uh Oh, it was uh, still a cob icon. What is that? Oh, it's the stars I can see through. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, but this is just ideas that I have. And um, well, let me know what you think. And uh, let's take it from there. Not again. It takes a second to do this, but it's just a little bit annoying. So, one of one of my other points was, like I said, that I'm also completely annoyed by all of these bugs all the time, all the place around. I am. Of course I am. But... They, in like I said, they are still not so severe that I would find the game unplayable. Definitely not. I find the game perfectly playable. So, uh... Yeah, my cat's running around on the floor and doing... If you see some crazy stuff going on back there with the uh, green screen, it is probably because one of one of the cats, or perhaps both of them, find it to be the most funny thing in the world to uh, play with it. And yeah. And sometimes the uh, cats also find it uh, nice to lie here on the back on my uh, chair. So, uh, well, at some point you might get to see my cats. Our cats, actually. So, uh, let's deliver a box and get some money. Now, I really like these, um, um, Kovalex missions because for some reason, the 4,000 or 3,000 something something, uh, um, red, uh, red something, I can't remember the name, missions, they are sort of all over the place. So when you get a mission, you can fly 40 million kilometers in one direction, pick up the box, and then fly 20 million kilometers in the other direction compared to where you are. Whereas these um, uh, Kovalex missions here, they seem to be sort of more well-rounded, uh, seen in light of uh, where they want you to fly and where they want you to uh, pick up the boxes. Let me just remember to put down the landing gear. Let me see if I can... Uh, Look at this. That that pad. Let me see if I can do it. Let's just try it. 
Yeah, yeah, I know. Front collision and back collision and side collision. Yeah, deck collision. I'm landing, of course. That's ground close to my ship. All right, so let's try something. Uh, first, I don't want to screw this up. So first I want to... I still can Never mind. Um, let's see. Comlink. Platinum Bay. Ah, that's the reason why. It's the blue one that I'm calling. Yes, of course. Let me see if it will auto land this time. No, still not. Usually it will, but uh, doesn't matter. I'm perfectly capable of delivering the boxes and landing my ship myself. All right, so let's see. That's the one. Come with me. So I think that we might have to, yeah, we do need to uh, um, postpone the uh, fun with the uh, yellow jacket on on. Um, um, just lost a plant named uh, Microtech uh, for the next stream. Uh, you can look in the... I will try to add... Well, that's one of the things that I want to do. Try to add a, um, a, a Google Calendar. Um, let me explain uh, why my streams for now seem to be so uh, all over the place. There are several reasons. First of all, I am what you would call a home dad. So uh, I am unemployed at the moment. I have one... Uh, ongoing, if you will, employment uh, application that I haven't gotten any answer of. Uh, but other than that, it is my wife who is uh, bringing the bacon and I take care of the kids and, and do all that, take care of the house. And like I do now, I stream. Uh, because this is sort of... That's a way for me to sort of uh, spend my time enjoyable. Um, but the thing is that my wife is a uh, medical doctor and she's, uh, she's, uh, being educated to be what is, is a general practitioner here in Denmark. And so that means that she so, sort of have to take, uh, um, positions in various hospital positions and all that. And, uh, when she's in the hospital... Her schedule is sort of, um, it's mixed, so they are both um, day um, shifts, they are night shifts, and they are full day shifts, all that, you know. And so, um, my streaming schedule will have to add her, adhere to her schedule, because she is so incredible sound sensitive, that even though she's sleeping in another room, that I'm streaming. She can hear me talk. At one point, I was uh, not even streaming. That was be before I began stream. I was just uh, recording a video. And uh, she wrote me on my phone and told me to uh, take on my earphones because she could hear whatever it was that I was seeing. She could hear that and it was too loud. And then... Obviously, I wrote her back and said, "Well, I'm, I'm, I'm talking in the in the I'm, I'm talking on a video on a microphone. How's that going to help that I put on my earphones?" And then she just told me to shut up. So uh, that is why we have sort of agreed. Um, you know, you know this kind of agreement where they say um, the food is good and they treat me very well. <laughs> uh, that kind of agreement that uh, when she's here and she has to work I have to shut up and that means that I can't stream and I can't record so that is why my streaming schedule is still pretty much under development if you will so but but I'm I'm trying to get um, a Google a Google Calendar on my uh, on my Twitch uh, page, so you can see sort of in advance not only what I want to stream, but also when I'm going to stream it. And then because it is my job right now to take care of the kids, to pick them up, to yeah, all that. 
there will be changes to the schedule. It's just the way my family situation is right now. So, uh, yeah. I know it's not exactly the best condi conditions for a new streamer to get an audience. But I, I family's first. That's just the way I see it. So, um, yeah. Hopefully you can understand that. And as a matter of fact, when I'm finished streaming here, I have to go to uh, daycare and pick up my little daughter and then figure out some, some food for us. Not food for thought, but food for children. <laughs> All right, let me just see something pretty quickly. All right. So again, I would like to uh, take this opportunity here to thank... I can see someone is watching, but I can't see uh, who you are. can't see your names, but, but whoever you are watching... No, that was really not what I wanted, but yeah, that's one of the other hotkeys that I have. Let's try again. Oh. Troubles with... Let's try again. Come on. Give me my... Alright, so I'll try to get a little further away so that I'm not jammed. Yes, one of the things that I can say right at the moment, right now, is that all of, with few exceptions, one, um, <clears throat> one of my recordings didn't go as well. So that's just the way it is. But with very few exceptions, I will try to, uh, or I will put out my streams here. I'm recording them as I stream in higher resolution, higher higher um, quality. So if you would like to see, uh, if you sort of come in into the middle of a stream and you would like to see what has happened before, of course you can watch it again on, um, you can watch it again here on Twitch, but you can also go to my YouTube channel and watch it there in, well, hopefully better quality than here on Twitch. So. Uh, I am uh, recording at higher bit rate, so hopefully that gives better quality. So, and it will be... Um, the videos will be moderately edited, so some of the travel parts here I might edit out. They will be edited, so if you want to sort of get the full unedited raw stream, then you need to see it on Twitch. But other than that, the uh, the uh, high res, uh, high quality um, Twitch, uh, sorry, uh, stream recordings, they will be on my YouTube channel. And I try to edit them as little as possible, so that you get as much of the streaming experience as I can give you. But loading screens and all that, I will probably I will edit that out. So, uh, yeah. And again, like I've said a couple of times now, if you feel for it, really, truly, do engage in the chat. I would very much like to talk with you. That is why I'm. That's one of the reasons I stream, is to have a conversation going uh, with the people that are watching my uh, watching my stream. And and it can be almost about anything. So if you want to know some of uh, about the the equipment that I have, that I use. If you want to know how old I am for some reason, 
Uh, then you can ask me that if you want to know uh, how many children I have, you want to know what I do in my spare time, my education, anything of the sorts. If you want to, well, let's get that out of the right of the way. I am an astronomer. I have a master degree in astronomy and physics here in, uh, from uh, Denmark, Copenhagen, University of Copenhagen. So if you want to ask me something general about astronomy, not something very specific, because then I have to look it out, but something general, then I can also say something about that. So if you keep it uh, clean and uh, if you keep it uh, sober, then the... Uh, the mic is open, also for you. And of course, I would like to point out very clearly, if you don't want to engage in the chat, if you don't want to engage with me, if you would just like to sit quietly and watch me play, then that is also perfectly okay. Definitely. I don't want you to feel pressure of any sort to chat with me if you don't want to do it. Not at all. But like I've said a couple of times in my in my on my streams that the reason I stream contrary to making YouTube videos, which I also do, is that when I stream I can get sort of a more direct and personalized um, relationship with the viewers that I than I can on YouTube of course there's definitely also conversation opportunities oh on YouTube definitely of course there is um, but it's always sort of uh, let's see where I am in relation to oh, I'm just way off um, but it will obviously always be sort of post post recording so it's some so it would be something like I make a video and then you can uh, watch it then you can comment on it and then I can answer either in text or uh, let me see if I can still know quantum well uh, yeah, either in text or in the next video, I can answer you there. But streaming gives me sort of a, a more direct opportunity to for you to actually ask me something, and then I can I can uh, answer it. So uh, yeah. But if if you don't want to uh, engage in the chat, don't do it. If you want to follow me, please do. If you don't want, then don't. I wouldn't say I don't care because obviously I care. I really do care. I am very grateful. I have two followers right now and I am completely and utterly grateful for both of them. Very much. Let's land and... Um... Landing successful. So if you want to, I would be very honored to have you as my followers. It means something to me in the sense that you show me in a more direct way that you appreciate what I do here. I'm not trying to sort of, it's not sort of an, a manure to, uh, to uh, get uh, sort of, um, it's like um, fame and fortune. Well. If I could get fortune from this, I would love it. But it's not a—it's not a way to get fame and fortune. It's a way to uh, uh, that is the follows, right? It's a way for me to feel pers personal satisfaction knowing that there are people that actually like what I do. I like what I do. That's why I do it. But if someone else like what I do, then uh, the more the better, right? It's just like. Um, it's just like if you have, if you have a an educate an educ if you have an education, like I do. Um, whether it's uh, whether you are a research scientist or you have a master degree or you're just a plumber, 
Uh, just not just a plumber, but 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 a plumber. Um, knowing that you are good at what you do gives you uh, a, a certain uh, personal satisfaction, and enjoying what you do also gives sort of a, a, a personal satisfaction, and to some extent, that can be enough. But it is always just a little bit more special to have someone else tell you that they like what you do. Like if you are, if you're a plumber, like I said, and you really enjoy your work, and you know that you're good at your work, it means a lot. But it just gives it that little special extra if you go on on, a, on doing a job at some uh, someone, and and then they just uh, say um, that they are grateful for uh, the work that you have done, the good work that you, you do. And it just gives it that little special extra where you just think, ah, yes. And the same goes for me here. You could just see. That's the shipment, so I need to go to Lyria. There we go. I have sort of an impression that I just came from there, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's turn the uh, headlights off. I don't think we need him at the moment. And obviously also, you can say there are some um, practical advantages of, of following is that you get, notif you get more direct notification whenever I do something new. But if you don't want to do that, you can... Uh, well, there are several places that you can see. I try to put out notifications uh different places and i know that the notifications on my discord channel they uh, server they work so you can sign up there you can be a part of that and then you can go and watch whenever you have the time to see whether i'm online it will give you a notification there i am currently trying to set up a uh, Twitch server, a Twitch channel, whatever you want to call it, and send the notifications there. I'm not finished with that yet, but I want to do it. And so I try to make sort of a different, um, different areas that you can, uh, that you can uh, get in touch with me and to see if I put out something new. All right, so uh, let's uh, deliver the last box and then I will uh, fly into space and get into a bed. And then... Uh, well, unless something uh, crazy happens, then uh, I will end the stream there, but you never know. Oh, it was the wrong one. Yeah, 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 I know. There we go. Humble minds, okay. But like I said, I want to take this opportunity to thank every last one of you, every one of you who is either watching my stream, has been watching my stream, has watched my previous streams, will watch my future streams no matter who you are and and what you have watched and how much you have watched thank you it honestly quite honestly honestly means a lot to me it really does so uh yeah and no i'm not going to cry So on the flip side, I can say that it actually seems to work pretty well, this uh, thingy with my um, 
And we did actually need the headlights with the uh, green screen, even though it is an old green sheet. So it, uh, that's, that's nice. Let's hit the bricks. Oh. It certainly slows a uh, uh, slows a lot slower. Sounds strange, but yeah than the um, Titan Avenger. The only downside with the Titan Avenger when doing box missions like this is that I actually need to refuel it every single place because it only has those 500 uh, something. So let's see where we can land, perhaps over here. Yeah. I think no matter, no matter where I land, it will be sort of a... Uh, remember to put down the landing gear. Uh, it will be sort of a uh, very uh, unelegant Collision. landing. Yeah, I know. Yeah, pretty unelegant. Alright, so uh, let's uh, deliver the last box. And check what we have got, because I'm pretty sure that now we have, uh, should have uh, something around 30-something uh, thousand UEC. There we go. Yeah, this time I did put the landing gear down in the right way. <laughs> so, yeah. Let me just sit down a little bit better and move the microphone closer to me. Like that. Much better. So now, uh, now I do understand why uh, some streamers like the um, swirly arm instead of the... Uh, I have sort of a, a normal uh, microphone stand with a boom arm on and, and it's... It's, I think it's a good stand, really. It's solid, rock solid. I do think I need to put some weight on it because I have it extended quite a bit. And I do find it to be more stable. And most importantly, I don't need to have a shock mount on my microphone because it's completely decoupled from my, uh, from my, uh, from my desk. So even though I hammer on desk. You can see it uh, makes the camera jump up and down because the camera is standing on the desk. But uh, 6,000. Yeah, the microphone does. You, you could hear it, but it's not like saying boom, boom, boom. All right, so let's check it out. 44,901 AUC. Well, there's a bit to go if I want to get... Uh, if I were a rich man... <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I want to be a rich man in Star Citizen so I can buy nice things. Preferably when I don't have the Freelancer here anymore, I could buy the uh, Freelancer Max in-game. That's sort of the, uh, the goal. But, oh my, look at this. Oh, look. This is so cool. So beautiful. It's it's a I can understand why some people might find this a little bit strange or silly or whoa. <laughs> or anything like that to to play a game and then just sit and in awe and just a wow, but really. This is this game has one quality 
above all else, and I've said it numerous times, and I will say it numerous times again, it has profound immersion. Really profound immersion. It is convincing, and well, despite the lack of engines, <laughs> uh, it is truly convincing. I know it's not. It, you can. You can. I could take a screenshot of this, and I don't think that anybody would actually be in doubt about whether it was a maybe whether it was real or not because you can see it you can see that it's not really real but it's very convincing it's very beautiful and it's i i'm I... this is why i i'm i'm so deeply in love with this game if you will i'm sorry to, yeah, i know it sounds I'm in love with my wife, and to some extent, I'm in love with my children. So, so it's not it's not the same. It's not like I want to get a divorce uh, with my wife and then get married to a Star Citizen, but it's a different kind of love. It's, it's a sort of a, uh, a, a passionate love, a passion about. I have a passion about the game, and that passion makes me love the game in some sort some way so uh yeah and and i like other games i enjoy other games but i don't love other games in the same way i don't and, and it's, it's a feeling that i think should be explained like when i play star citizen i feel that that game gives me everything that I want from a game. Almost everything. I'm really not the big uh, FPS uh, person, the first person shooter person. I can play them and it's funny enough, but it's not something I would engage. I'm, I'm not the, uh, the Counter-Strike type of guy. I, I like uh, flying around or driving around or something like that. That's why I also play Farming Simulator, Euro Truck Simulator, American Truck Simulator, all that. And also R Factor, but that's a different kind of driving. But but yes. So uh yeah. That's uh brake. Put on the brakes and uh space brakes. See if I can uh avoid uh destroying the engines. And then I will find my bed and uh, go to sleep. But I want to make, because of all these, uh, well, strange bugs that happens from time to time, I will try to uh, slow the ship up as much as I can. See if I can find the... Uh, Heat thing. Ah, oh, yeah, there you can see it. Okay. So we need to, uh, well, we're almost there. So, uh, anyway. Nice and quiet. Did I forgot to turn on? Let's just take an outside peek now that we're here. Turn on the turn off the engines. Let's just take a look. See if I. No, they are turned on. There we are. Let's turn off the systems as well. Get out of the chair after a nice long day work. Go into bed, lie down, 
and get a well-deserved rest for the night. Good night.